two monosynths, one manufacturer, but which one will steal my heart? Find out in today's half assed tutorial. So, the Crave and the TD3, wonderful synthesizers, although to be fair, I haven't used them as much as I thought I would. I think this is because I gravitate towards groove boxes and samples. I like playing with synths, but I spend more time with the tracks and the model samples. And if I want to do a sound design patching session, I will tend to either use the Nord Micro Modular or I will call up components for the Novation Circuit and create a patch with that. That being said, I have played with both of these boxes and I've got my own opinions on them. I will do an overview of both and then give you the verdict as to which one I think is the king of the Behringer budget monosynths. What I remember from my first moments of playing with the Crave was how warm and rich it sounded. It just conjured up that lovely retro evocative feeling that you got with Stranger Things soundtrack. It's a bit of a cliche, but the Crave seem to have a warm, fuzzy, analog hug to it. Most of my other synths are digital based, so that analog warmth was something I hadn't had in an instrument before. And although it feels solid, it was always a little bit wobbly, so I don't know if that's something with build quality for all of the Craves or just my particular machine. The most irritating thing that I found was the mini jack. I cannot for the life of me understand why the audio out is put on a mini jack on a synth that's this rich. It's very flexible and it's fairly intuitive to use the sound shaping controls with one knob to each sound parameter. It's quite flexible and is perfect as a starting out synth to learn a little bit about how subtractive synthesis works. I like the latch feature, I find that very handy, very useful for making drones. The patch bay is a nice addition, it increases the flexibility and the sound design capabilities, but it is a bit limited, so it's a hint at what you can do with modular synthesis. It's only got one envelope, which is a bit of a disappointment, and that is set to the amplitude, but you can route it through to the filter section. One LFO, that's handy. Two would have been better, but it does mean that you can introduce some dynamics to the sound that you're making. You've also got noise on there, and there are a few controls which are nicely designed to use in conjunction with external equipment or to route other messages back in through it. The sequencer is a bit of a pain in the arse, but once you get into a routine it's manageable, although still limited. All in all, it's quite a capable analog monosynth that does all of the things that you would expect for something that is introductory and simple. It would certainly serve to bring analog warmth to anybody's setup. All you need to do is to remember your succulents to go with it, of course. The reason I don't use it as much as I thought I would is quite simple. I haven't found a way yet to make it fit with my workflow. This, I think, is because you can't save the patches. So while it's very nice for playing around with and designing new sounds, if you're going to take it to perform live, you're kind of stuck a little bit because you've got no way of recalling patches which you've crafted for a particular tune. It's very limited for 
improvised jams because you never know when you turn it on what particular sound you're going to get out of it and that's compounded by if you've removed the patch leads that can affect the sound that you've got on the box left at the end. Although it's still a mono synth from the same manufacturer and has got an evocative retro feel to it, the TD3 is a completely different instrument. It's not a flexible synth, it does one job, but it does do that job really quite well. It's not to say there are no sound shaping controls, there are, but there's no real patches on it. The whole synth is a patch in its own right and the controls are just like the continuous controllers that you would assign to various parameters. The addition of the distortion allows a little bit more control over how the sound is shaped, but not much more. This box does produce acid. The wonderful, burbly, screamy, squelchy goodness that encapsulated the late 80s, early 90s. You can make the TD3 burble and scream like a true refugee from the 80s and 90s rave scene. In terms of using this live, it just gives you what you want. If you want the acid sound, it is there instantly without worrying about patching or anything else. You turn it on, you get acid. If you have a TD3, it's because you want to make acid sounds. That is simple and it's refreshing and that's one of the reasons why I love this synth. My favourite feature of it though is the randomise feature. So you can randomise an entirely new pattern instantly. And for live improvising and jamming, that's amazing because all of a sudden with just a couple of button presses, you can be led off in a completely new direction. So, to sum up, if I was only allowed one of these boxes, if there could be only one, I'm afraid it'd have to be the TD3. Although it's less flexible than the Crave, and the sound design capabilities are much more limited, it delivers an absolutely iconic sound which everybody recognises and everybody loves. You instantly have that 303 sound without having to think about anything else and the controls are perfectly sorted for you to squelch and wail and scream your way through any track. And of course, with the addition of that random pattern feature, you can add a sprinkle of unique acid goodness to any track that you're playing. Don't get me wrong, the Crave is absolutely fantastic for the price and it is really nice for a good introduction to sound design. And if you've got a digital setup and you just want to introduce a bit of warmth into your sound, the Crave is a very good and economical way to do it. However, the TD3 is the one that I could never give up. As Fatboy said, everybody needs a 303, or at least as close as they can get on a budget. Right kids, that's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, spread it around, let somebody else know. Make sure you hit that like button. And if you've made it to the end without subscribing, I really think you need to do it. You owe it to yourself. 
as they say at the Sirius Cybernetics Corporation. Share and enjoy! Bye kids!